In this video, I will be showing you how to use a PDF document that you have, whether it be something you have downloaded online or something you've made yourself, um, but how you can use a PDF to turn that into a digital worksheet in Google Slides. So in Google Slides, in order to make this happen, you are going to need some image files, which are often called JPEGs or PNGs. It doesn't matter if you use JPEGs or PNGs as long as you can create those or make those. Also know that some documents on Teachers Pay Teachers are secured, which means that you cannot extract things. So it's not a perfect system, but I will show you a little workaround for that. I use the website PDF2, the number two, PNG.com. You can upload any files up to 20 and it will process them and make it so that these are image files. I have already done that just to speed things up a little bit. It takes it a little while, not, not an extremely long time, um, to process and convert. And then it puts them all in a zip folder. So now here in week one, I have each of those pages as an image file. In Google Slides, I'm going to go to slides.google.com and then create a blank presentation. So once you have your, your blank presentation open, it's going to open up with a couple of things going on. It thinks we're going to use this to make a real presentation where we might have a title and subtitle. I like to click and delete these. We don't need those. Then it's also formatted to fit the size of your screen, which we are working with a worksheet that is in portrait. So I'm going to go to File, Page Setup, and here where it says widescreen, I'm going to click Custom, and I'm going to put 8.5 by 11. If your worksheet went the other direction, you would need to choose 11 by 8.5, and, and then choose Apply. Now it looks like the same document that I just had open a few minutes ago. Once we have converted these, it took this and created them into image files, now we can click background. Choose image. And if you have them on your Google Drive, you can choose from there, but I'm going to, going to need to browse my computer. They were in my downloads. And I'm going to come to week one and I'm going to insert page two. You could insert the cover, but that just really sounds like it's going to be more or more than what the students need for that particular day. And now this is in the background. So students cannot click this. They can't accidentally press or delete anything. If they were tech savvy, they really could go to background and reset it, but let's hope that they would never do that to us. But it would definitely avoid accidentally clicking and deleting things, which definitely happens with little ones. I'm going to insert a blank page, click background, choose image, go to browse once again, and now I'm going to insert page three because with my math intervention, we would do each of these pages every single day. So I could share this as math week one, day one. That way now they have everything they need for week one, day one. I would also suggest adding in text boxes for their answers. And in my opinion, this is not right or wrong, but in my mind, I like to get the font in a size that's going to work for that answer. And then I type, type here. I created a lot of products without doing this. And then I found that kids that use iPads, there's nothing there unless there's a text box. So I've learned the hard way. I would click type here and then they don't have to insert a text box. They don't have to do anything. It is ready for them. So if I were using this with my students digitally, I would type here, type here, and just put that text box in multiple places. You can do that by copying and pasting. 
and copy and paste. And really, if I were to do this, I could copy and paste them all at one time and bring them so that each column is completed. On page two, I would do the same things. It might look a little bit different for time, but in the end, in a pinch, if you had a worksheet or a document that you love to use with your students, this would be a good workaround so that you can still use that. One additional um, thing that I would like to point out, let me open that file one more time. I hope other people have computers that look like this. I had this open just a few minutes ago. Okay, so another thing, some documents on Teachers by Teachers are secured, which means there are restrictions that will not allow you to export it as a PNG or a JPEG like I just demonstrated. So we need some pictures to be inserting here into this background. One option is to take a screenshot. The difficult part about making a video for everybody to watch is that taking a screenshot is different on every single computer. So you might need to Google how to take a screenshot on an HP blah blah blah. How to take a screenshot on a Dell blah 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 blah. So depending on your computer will depend on how you take a screenshot. For me on my MacBook I can hit shift command and the number three. That is not guaranteed to work on every device but that will work on mine. Now I have a screenshot just like we take on our phones all the time we can take our screenshot and crop it down to be just the picture that we need. None of the extra busyness from our web page. Oh goodness. Here we go. I got it. All right. Then this would work in the exact same way whenever I would come to background. I would choose my image, go to browse, but then instead of this folder that was so wonderfully put together by that website, if that's restricted for you, it would also be on my desktop as a screenshot. And so I can insert it and it really should look exactly the same because it's a screenshot versus um, that downloaded file, but it was a screenshot of the same document. So I hope this helps you to convert some products over to digital.